Whoops. Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, it's good to be here on Sunday morning, our, our Sunday morning worship service at PCF Montebello. We're so thankful to be a part of everything that the kingdom of God is doing on this earth. We are part of the family, part of the kingdom, part of the army of God, and it's just a blessing to be here. As we know, uh, this morning we are still uh, doing uh, uh, not in-person service, but we're doing a live stream only. This is our last Sunday. We will be back next Sunday to uh, be together again. We're just do making sure that we have that, that uh, maintenance done so that we're ready to go. We want to finish out our year with some incredible times of worship and fellowship incredible times of experiencing the power of God and we just want people to know uh, and don't forget that uh, make plans make plans to get back into the house of God make plans to be very secure as you do it because uh, here at PCF Montebello that's exactly what we want to do make sure that you uh, feel comfortable and mm, let me maybe move that word out comfortable make you feel uh, confident is, is the better word. We don't want you comfortable. We want us to be passionately on fire for the Lord, and sometimes that, that invades our comfort zone. So anyway, with that, we're going to open up in prayer. Welcome again to PCF Montebello, our Sunday morning service. I hope you came hungry and thirsty for the Word of God, for the presence of God, and the, the grace and mercy of God, the wisdom of God. Before we actually pray, I do want to mention this, that as you are joining with us today, and I'm going to mention it again because people jump in at different time slots in our service, what I want to do is I want to ask you to make sure that when you jump in for service, especially if you are a part of this church family, stay in the service from beginning to end. Uh, especially, I just feel like the Spirit of God is speaking to me on, uh, with the, the Word of God and showing me things. And sometimes it takes a little time to bring it out and explain it. And so I just want to encourage you, stay in the service so that you don't miss a thing. You don't want to miss what God is saying. One of the things that's really difficult in live stream services only is that you can miss things. You miss certain things that God's doing and saying. And so we don't want you to miss uh, any of it if you don't have to. So stay with us. And again, when we get back in person, uh, oh, then it'll be a lot easier not to miss anything. But for now, stay with it all the way through. With that, let's open up in a word of prayer. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the city of Montebello. Welcome to the, the family, PCF Family Church. Welcome to all of our friends and neighbors and loved ones and, and people that are out of city, out of state, even out of the country, we've had so many friends join in with us, and we want to welcome you as well. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the amazing opportunity that we have today to bring praise and honor and glory to your name. Lord, the, the one thing that is so clear to me, and, and you always remind me of, is that when we come to you, you see everything. There's nothing hidden from you. Lord, there's nothing that you cannot see or do not know. So we just want to humble ourselves before you and just come with our hearts open wide, wanting you to be glorified in our life. We want to worship you with a pure and a righteous heart. We know that the righteousness of God comes through the precious blood of Jesus, comes through the living word of God, comes through, Lord, our relationship with you. So Father, this morning we just want to ask that you would help us to stay in that place, Lord God, of, of just humility and teachability, openness. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. And Lord, we, we want to have that repentive heart all the time. Lord, help us to come to you with, with our hearts like that. So when we worship, it's not it's not poisoned. Our worship's not poisoned with a bunch of darkness on the inside games that we play. Father, cleanse us, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Well, I think it's time to get into some good worship. Starvine, uh, gosh, it feels like uh, we, you know, we were doing this for a while, and, and it was good when we had just live stream. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting back together. But in the meantime, we can have an incredible time. Don't be a spectator. 
be a participator. All right, let's worship the Lord. you dance with me in this time a jubilee come won't you sing with me the sweetest songs a praise to our King and gather everyone and tell the news, go tell it now That our time for peace is here No more worry, no more fear Cause we are free Yes, we are free Rejoice and sing Lift your hands to sing No more chains to hold you down Raise your voice and shout it out That we are free No longer bound to misery our fathers come, so join everyone to praise His name. Let's praise His name. Amen. The trumpet sound spread this word all around. The redemption is here, freedom's been delivered. He set us free. He set. your hands to see no more chains to hold you down raise your voice and shout it out that we are free no longer bound to misery our fathers come so join everyone to praise His name. Yeah. Oh, sing out loud with me. I am set free. Sing out loud with me. I am set free. Yes, sing out loud with me. I am set free. Sing out loud with me. I am set free Sing out loud with me I am set free Sing out loud with me I am set free 
rejoice and sing. Lift your hands to see. No more chains to hold you down. Raise your voice and shout it out. Then we are free. No longer bound to misery. Our Father's come, so join everyone to praise His name. Let's rejoice and sing. Lift your hands to see. No more chains to hold you down. Raise your voice and shout it out. Then we are free, no longer bound to misery. Our Father has come, so join everyone to praise His name. Let's rejoice and sing. Lift your hands to see. No more chains to hold you down. Raise your voice, shout it out. Then we are free. No longer bound to misery. Our fathers come, join everyone to praise. His name And I need you To soften my heart to break me apart, I need you To open my eyes To see that you're shaping my life And all I hear But I To trust what you say That your good Is your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my life So I need you Lord And I need you to soften my heart, to break me apart. I need you to pierce through the dark and cleanse every part of me. But all I am And I surrender And give me faith To trust what you say That you're good and your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my life Give me faith 
give me faith to trust what you say that you're good and your love is great i'm broken inside i give you my I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me. My flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me. It's my flesh may fail. My God, you never will. I may be weak. It's your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail. But my God, you never will. Give me faith to trust what you say. Let you your good, your love is great. I'm broken inside. I give you my life. So I give it all. Give me faith. To trust what you say That you're good And your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my life Give me faith Give me faith to trust what you say That you're good, it's your love is great I'm broken inside, I give you my life I may be weak I may be weak It's your spirit strong in me It's my flesh may fail But my God, you never will I may be weak But your spirit strong in me And my flesh may fail but my God, you never will. I may be weak. Your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail. But my God, you never will. No, you never will. I will call upon your name And keep my eyes upon the waves When oceans rise and my soul rests in your embrace For I am yours you are mine so i will call upon your name and keep my eyes upon the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your name 
praise for I am yours. You are mine, yes, I will call, but I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. And oceans rise, my soul rests in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Yes, you are mine. And we were my trust and without borders. And we walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be me stronger in the presence of my Savior. The Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be me stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. So I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. Oceans rise, my soul rests in your embrace, for I am yours. You are my sign, will call, so I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul wears your embrace For I am yours You are mine Yes, hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise his name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Come on, let's just take this second. Thank you, Lord. I am yours. You are mine. Lord God, you called us to be your children. You allowed us to be in your family, in your army. Lord God, you've allowed us to be a part of the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and saving us, for giving us. Thank you so much, Lord. God, we love you. We praise you. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to go before the Lord in a time of prayer. Before we do, I just want to take a, a quick second to apologize to everyone at home um, <laughs> because I was just singing all crazy here and um, I didn't have my mic off and so I just realized I tur when I turned it off I realized all the poor people at home listening and they were wanting to hear good singing and some good praising and I was just going nuts and then found out that I had my mic still on so if you heard some of that at home <laughs> if you did Lord, help us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm the kind of person when I worship God that uh, I don't care what it sounds like. And, um, you know, if, if some tears got to drop, they got to drop. If I have to grab tissue and wipe my nose and all that, I just have to do it. God is good and he's worthy. Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, thank you. I got a few people, uh, pe people saying, giving me a quick little encouragement. Uh, but it is, oh, we're hearing something about being a little glitchy, so. Thank you. I like that, getting feedback instantly from people. That's nice. All right, well, we're going to go before the Lord in a time of prayer. And um, uh, once again, as I was worshiping, I felt this, this leading again. And so I just want to mention it again. Um, I just get this strong sense that, and I know it's the Spirit of God. I can tell when the Spirit of God puts something in my heart to do. I don't actually need to know why or what I just need to obey and I know there there's some that you know there are a lot of people sick and a lot of people that are experiencing colds and flus and and even uh, worse stuff you know battling cancer diabetes and other things but the thing that I feel like is <clears throat> the thing that I feel the Lord has put in my heart is there's some urgent ones and you're out there and you're saying God I, we need a miracle we really need a miracle that, that I feel in my spirit. I feel that, that, that urgency. So I just want to pray. Uh, we're going to definitely be praying for what, what I think are our most important prayers. People to be saved, prodigal sons and daughters coming home, um, praying for uh, just the, uh, the body of Christ being strong in the Lord, uh, praying for our nation. You know, the powerful, those are very important and powerful things right now that we're praying for. Uh, but the specific ones. You have a need. You have something that is really burdening you. And, and I just want to encourage you to bring it to the Lord. He loves you. He cares. He's, no one loves you like he does. And put your trust in him. He's good. Pray for healing. Pray for God's provision. Pray that God would move mightily. Um, yeah. yeah. God's a, God is on the throne. He's good. He's in control. He's good. And I just want to remind you that. Uh, maybe it's not healing. Maybe there's something else. That's okay. You can bring it to God. But those of you who are praying for that urgent, miraculous healing, let's just know that God hears you. We're going to pray. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in Jesus' precious name, Lord, we know that you are God. You are almighty. You put this love in our heart. You put this faith in our soul. Lord, you gave us when we didn't deserve. You blessed us, Lord God, when we were, even when we were, we were rebellious. You brought us into your home, Lord, into your house, into your home to receive your forgiveness and love and even your parenting, Lord. You spiritually parent us. You are our Father. Thank you. This morning we take the time to thank you, Father, for making this house a home. Let your body all over the world, let the churches be the, the 
the kind of homes that you want them to be. Filled with love. Filled with wisdom and forgiveness. Filled with redemption and restoration. Father, we take the time to pray over those who are sick in body. Lord God, those who are experiencing an urgent situation. Lord, I lift up to you, Father, those, oh God, who are just desperate. Father, there's a desperation in their soul. Father, we pray for healing upon them. Healing upon them, Father. I lift up my friend, Raul. Pray for him. I know that you're with him. I know you love him. Bless him and his whole family. I lift up my, my, my friends that I know of that are sick, Lord, that are in need of healing. Oh, gracious God, we join together, Lord, and we unite together, and I agree together with those who are praying at home right now, and Lord God, those who are serious about you. Lord, I pray, Father, we pray together that you would do something amazing in their midst, and, and Lord, awaken them to what you are doing, Father, specifically in that urgent prayer today. Bring healing, Lord. Lord, heal that marriage that's about to fall apart. Heal it, Father. Lord, bring those families back together. Break down the walls of pride that stop us from being united. Lord God, bring your people to a greater place of victory, a greater place, Lord God, of humility, power, for your glory, Lord. God, there's so many things to lift up. I don't even know where to begin. I just want to bring it all to you and say, God, we belong to you. Have your way in us no matter what it is. Have your way, God. We surrender all, all to you, our blessed Savior, all to you, our God we trust, all to you. Oh, Lord, a miracle take place. Let the world know, Lord God, through your people, let the world know, in spite of your people, but through your people, let the world know, God, that you are good, that you are almighty, and that you, Lord, your family, your body, on this earth, Lord God, that's where the answers are, in the family of Christ, in the presence of God, in the word of God, the Spirit of God. Let the world know they don't have to run, they don't have to hide, they don't have to put their hope in anything else, those temporary things that always let them down. Father, draw your people, we pray. Use us, Lord, if you will, that people's lives would be changed by the power of God being brought to your family. And Lord, we just, Lord, we just pray that the that if you allow us to have the rest of this year, Lord God, that the holidays and every part of, our, uh, of this time of the year would be glorious, glorious and filled with joy. And Lord God, we refuse to let the enemy take that joy from us. Have your way, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Man, I praise God. Let's just thank the Lord. Let's just give God a thank you. Lord God, we thank you, praise you. Uh, you know, you're at home, a lot of times when we're praying, I'll pray specific and details and stuff, and I could just feel today that I just needed to agree with you, to agree with your prayer. And so that's why it's so important not to just, you know, watch other people pray, but you be praying, because others are agreeing with you in your prayer. So, amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and... Um, T just take one second to thank you, Styrene. I always appreciate it so much. Take one second to welcome all of you uh, into the service, um, attending online. We're just thankful. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for all the people of the city of Montebello. This is our city, and we love our city, and we pray for our city. And, and uh, from top to bottom, uh, we pray for our city uh, and the children of our city. And we just thank God so much for our city. So. Uh, what we're going to do, remember this, uh, we're going to uh, have our offering time at the end of service. Please, 
please stick around all the way to the end, not because of the offering time, but as we opened up the service this morning, stick around for the whole service so you can get everything there is that, that we want to bring out today in the Word of God. And I can promise you, if you jump back and forth and, you know, you're going to this other preacher and this favorite preacher and th this and that, I promise you by doing that, you're going to get yourself spiritually sick. Seriously, I, I promise that. It happens. It may take time, but you will. You'll get spiritually sick. Why? Because you're, you're, you're meant to be in, in, that, in that, uh, <clears throat> that place, that your local church. You're meant to be in that message. And yes, you can catch up on all the other good stuff that other preachers are doing. You can catch up on all that later. But I tell you, when you, you only get little parts of messages, you don't get the, the depth. You don't get the meat. You don't get what God is saying to us in the overall. So let's not turn church into hometown buffet or whatever. What's I don't know what those are like now. Well, uh, what are some of the other uh, places, hometown buffet and, and those, those types of places where you can eat and taste every kind of food? Every time I used to go there, I'd always leave full and then later on sick. Because you're not, you're just not meant to eat like, I don't know, I better be careful before I get in trouble. All right, so we're going to get into the Word, a couple of a quick announcements. It's very, very important that you stay connected uh, via Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Be con stay connected so you can find out what's going on. We have some, some, some uh, gatherings that we're doing in the near future. We're, we have outreaches that are coming up very shortly homeless outreach that's coming up. We have our Zoom fellowship meetings on Thursday nights. We've got, um, you know, in the, in the near future, uh, be, you know, we're, we're going to be coming together and doing what we always do, decorating the church for the holidays. And um, there's a way to do that safely. So just stay connected with our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, uh, specifically Facebook page for details. Uh, and you might find the, the information that you need and you're the answers to your questions on what we're doing. So that's it. I'm not going to spend any more time on announcements right now, Just, but be on the lookout for the outreaches and the events that are coming up. Very, very important. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So real quick, I want to say hello to everyone who is watching and is, is, is with us and hanging out with us today and in the Word, worshiping with us. It's such a blessing to see all of you. Now, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm going to do it now really quick. I, I want to say I love you, miss you, to all of you who are you know, just sharing that sentiment to us. I do see my, my mom all the way in Oklahoma. I, how can I not say hi and I love you to my mom? How can I not do that? That's not good, right? Can't do that. I got to do that is what I'm trying to say. Um, so... Yes, I just wanted to, so many, awesome. I want to say hi to all of you, but I'm biased. <laughs> it's my mom. Okay. Oh, I can't leave out Joe. I can't leave out Joe. Love you guys. All right, so we're going to get into God's Word. I hope you're ready. I am. I want to, uh, I'm more ready when I pray. So let's, let's ask the Lord for His power, His blessing. Let's ask the Lord to have His way. Father, in Jesus' precious name. We come to you desiring more than anything to receive the living word of God. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would move powerfully in the presence of your people. Lord, if there's anything that is in the way of us receiving the word of truth, that timely word for us now, and that instruction that helps us for all time, Lord, if there's anything that gets in the way, that Father, we pray. If it's, if it's something we need to repent, we, we want to repent of that. If it's something that we're not aware of, make us aware. Father, we pray, remove every barrier, every bondage. Remove every roadblock and stumbling block that we, your people, would be uh, directly connected to the Spirit of God and the Word of God and all that you have for us. Lord, have your way. We want to hear from you. In Jesus' precious name. All right, so let's get into the word this morning, man, what a blessing it is to be able to 
to get into God's Word. And so, uh, this morning, we're going to be going to the book of Acts, chapter 5. And I will tell you this, um, this passage is one of those passages that's very, very interesting. It's powerful, it's fearful and scary and amazing all at once. It's just, just so much in this passage, and so I just am so looking forward to sharing this passage today. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 16 is where we will be. I'm going to read you the whole thing because if without it, you're, you, you just won't gather the things that, we're, that I believe God wants us to say. And the title of our message today is Purity That Leads to Power. Purity That Leads to Power. Now, there is a flip side to that title, and I'll share that later. But again, the title of this message is Purity That Leads to Power. This is a passage that I've sat uh, in churches and have heard many, many times. I've enjoyed messages on this so many times and been fed and edified. And there's a lot that you can really learn from this passage. Uh, but I do believe that there's some things that are very specific about it, and I'm hoping that we can hear those things today. So with that... Um, I would like to, to just mention one, more one or two more things, and then we're going to read. Uh, the story or, or the place that we're really wanting to point out to you does actually start in the chapter before, and we'll touch on that. But our main passage is, is found in, in chapter 5, verse 1 through 16. And um, with that, let's go ahead and read. I'm going to read chapter 5, verse 1. Here we go. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and, and brought a certain part and laid it to the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained, was it not your own? I'm going to read verse 4 again. I want to make that clear. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Those are questions. Those are key questions for today. And so, uh, again, Peter asked these questions to Ananias. Was it not your own? And when it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You've not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things, and the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was not about three hours later, or it was about three hours later, when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And through the hands of the, the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they, were, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared 
joined them, but the people esteemed them highly. Verse 14, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. So they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter's passing by might fall on them. Also, a multitude gathered uh, from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. They were all healed. I apologize for my reading today. Last service, I used a Bible with huge words, and it was so easy to read, and I'm back to my Bible, and now I'm realizing my Bible's words are a little small. <clears throat> so thank you for being so patient with my reading. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this morning, I'm, we're going to dive into this story. Um, there's so much to talk about here, so much. But um, I think we're going to just start with the thing that is fascinating to me. This is a, an account of things that were taking place in the early church. The early church. I hear a lot of uh, people, teachers, pastors who share things about the early church, and it's a great thing to do. It really is. It's a really great thing to do because um, when you look at the early church, what you find is you find that you can learn a lot of things about what God it was doing is, and establishing that help us today. But in this, in this account in the early church, the thing that fascinates me the most is the power of God that was demonstrated in the midst of God's people. There was such power. It was amazing power. It was power that was just fascinating and, and yeah, unbelievable in a way, but of course believable because we know with God all things are possible. And so it's just so fascinating to watch the power of God uh, happening in the early church. And I just want to clarify something that's so important. Um, you know, in the early church, there, were not, there wasn't a lot of time. We, we don't see that they've been around a, a long time yet. The, this, this account here showing and demonstrating that such great power, the power of God working through the people and working through the church and the, and the leaders, um, there wasn't a lot of time for the, the church and the people that made up the church, <clears throat> excuse me, it, there wasn't a lot of time for them to, to start learning bad habits. You know, it, it was very fresh and new. And so think about it, you know, there wasn't a lot of time for them to start figuring out ways on how to be, uh, how to get, get a, away with things or, or how to be unfaithful or how to make it look like they're, they love God. They, it, it wasn't really, you know, there wasn't a lot of time that had passed yet. And so I think another way to say that is there wasn't a lot of time for the people of God to start justifying uh, why they don't do certain things and why they don't want to get, uh, you know, be obedient to the Lord in this, that, or the other. It was, it was a time in the early part of the church that it was just pure. There was such a purity about their faith. It was such a purity. That, and again, I want to emphasize, what is purity? It's something that's pure. It's, it's, it's completely and thoroughly one of a kind, if you will. Uh, it hasn't been infiltrated. It hasn't been poisoned. It hasn't been um, saturated with or even infected by anything other than what it is because it was still very new and very young. And so that, that pure faith was just beautiful to, to look at and to watch. And that's what fascinates me about it, uh, about the power that was taking place, that was being demonstrated in the church. The power of God that was just uh, evident. I, I just think there's a connection to that purity. There is a connection to it. The purity of their faith. And, and again, uh, even the title might just give, make you think that we're going to be talking about purity in, in other ways and other things. We're not going to be talking about specific 
purity, areas where we need to be in purity this morning. I want to just sort of generalize that the early church had not enough time to become really impure in the way they would go about their obedience to the Lord. It was just very genuine. And, and I'm not saying to you that anyone was perfect. I'm not saying to you that, that when we look at this story, there are certain things that we should be doing to do exactly what they do and that's how we're going to become pure hopefully by by getting into this message and really breaking it down hopefully you'll be able to see that that's not what's being said i just want to point to you this interesting amazing uh this amazing thing and that is the early church in this account was was experiencing power but they were also very pure in their faith they were just so willing and ready to to be pure in their faith. Now, I, I, this will not show up on your, your screen today, and, and, and for good, good reason, I don't want to get too, too into the verses in the chapter before, but I want to just show you, so you understand what I mean by the way that the early church, their faith was so pure. I want to read you verses, chapter 4, verse 32. The Bible says, Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they all had things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And, and then it goes on to say, Nor was anyone among them, none of them lacked. All, uh, for all who were possessors of lands and houses sold sold them and brought the proceeds and the things uh, of the things they were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet and they did distributed to each one anyone uh, to anyone who had need and verse 36 says and, and Joseph who, who was also named uh, Barnabas uh, by the apostles which is translated son of encouragement a Levite of the country of Cyprus having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet now I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, so I just want you to understand that when we read that, we can see that the, the believers, the new believers gathering together, they were just pure of heart and in one mind and one accord, and they were just worshiping God and loving each other. And they were even like, you know, just looking around to see what the needs are and bringing together monies and stuff to help people's needs. And in, in looking at that, and, and, and looking at what we just read, I want to make sure that everyone understands that this passage is not about offering time. It's not about that. Even though there was monies and there was people giving, it's not really about offering time. And so just pay attention to that when you look at the whole story. So, but again, that parody, it was amazing. They were just um, so willing. You, you notice nowhere in the scriptures did God ever require them to do what some of those people were doing? He didn't require that. Neither does he require that even now for, all, for everybody to just, to, just to give everything we have to, uh, uh, you know, to bring it together. Now, even when I say that, I realize, oh, that needs clarification. It does. Because when you read this account, this is there's something else we want to look at. We do know that the Bible teaches us that God, God doesn't, he, he wants our all, He wants our whole life. He wants our everything. But nowhere do you see in Scripture after this story that God ever commanded that we, you know, that, that we give all of our possessions. Think about it. So God gives you a job. He gives you a paycheck. And then you go and you just put it right back, uh, you know, into the church and don't pay your bills. How long, are you gonna, how long is it going to be before, because you didn't pay your bill, your light goes off? And how long is it going to be before you have to turn your car in because you didn't make your car payment? They come and repo it. How long will it be? See, the point is this. It's not about just, uh, uh, you know, the whole body of Christ. When they're really pure, then they just give everything. When God says, I want your everything, I want your whole heart, I want your trust, I want you to believe in me, that your life belongs to me, I want you to trust me in every way. And then when you do that, what, what do you receive? What do you start to experience? You, you experience God's guidance, His direction for all of life, even on how to spend the money that He gives to you. So again, don't want to spend a lot of time on the whole money side of it. I want you to see the purity of their faith. 
There was such there was such a love and a and, and an awareness. Man, I'm a child of God now, and and look at the family I'm a part of, and look at what God is doing. I get to I, I'm a part of something so amazing. His love, his 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 miracles are happening everywhere. If you if you notice, like I was pointing out to you, that great power was being demonstrated. Okay, so hope you're still with me. So I want to look at the look at some things about this. I believe that there's a connection here. This purity that leads to power. And I believe God wants to continue to demonstrate His life-changing power, His miraculous power throughout the body of Christ and through the body of Christ. We've been commissioned to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We've been commissioned to go and share the love of God, the truth of God with the lost and dying people, which we were. We've been commissioned to do that. But I tell you, uh, words are just words. When you go and when we do what God wants us to do with the demonstration of power that backs it up, people can't deny that you serve the living God. There is power when people walk in a purity of faith. Now, I said all that because it didn't take long for us to begin to look at, as we're looking at this account, that in that pure state where everybody's just really excited and helpful and loving and sacrificial and, you know, they were just uh, in one accord, it didn't take long for human beings, for mankind, for our sin nature to, to get in the way. And this is where you start to see in chapter 5, you see this, this story of Ananias and his wife Sapphira. Didn't take long for someone to start trying to figure out instead of, you know, just obeying the Lord or just doing what God's putting on their heart to do or, you know, uh, it didn't take long for them to try to find a way how not to do it. And I find that to be so real in the body of Christ today. I'm not putting anyone down. I'm not saying anything specific, this or that. I want to speak generally because the Bible gives us this this account that reveals it. You know, I've always found it interesting how, how some people will put so much effort and energy and so much of their ability into trying to figure out how to cheat a system or how to do something wrong in order to come up or to get more. You know, if we would just put that same effort and hunger and thirst and and skill into just doing what God wants us to do and and give our whole heart to God and to trust Him, even when we don't always understand or where we don't have control, where we just trust God, if we put that same amount, we would see such beautiful things happen. But there's so many people, even in the body of Christ, unfortunately, who, who spend time trying to figure out how not to obey the Lord and make it look like they're obeying the Lord. See, when we look at the story this way, we start to look at, yeah, there was great power that was happening in the church, but this couple... Ananias and Sapphira, what, what took place in the story, I believe that the Lord just wants us to see this story so that we can learn something. And the thing I believe God wants us to learn is that there's an impurity that holds back power. There's an impurity that holds back power. Remember how I mentioned the title, Purity That Leads to Power. And I have a flip side to that title, and I always like to share it if you're making notes, and that is Pretending That Leads to Powerlessness. So if the title is Purity That Leads to Power, then that flip side is Pretending Leads to Powerlessness. 
See, when I look at what took place in this story with Ananias and Sapphira and the apostles, you know, the, the, they were gathering together, worshiping and praising God and being in one mind and one accord and people were bringing money and helping each other. And, and, and there was Barnabas who, you know, he was, I think he was one of the people that sold some land, got some major money to really help out. And Ananias and Sapphira, they caught, they got a look at that. They caught a look at what took place. And the Bible doesn't give us any detail as to how people treated Barnabas after he did what he did. We don't see where, uh, you know, a big parade came out and they threw Barnabas up on their shoulders and carried him around and said, oh, he's such a hero. Look at what he did and and, and gave him all this, this credit. It doesn't say anything about that. But what we can see and what we can take by looking at the scripture is that Ananias and Sapphira did catch something because it sparked something in them that wanted to, wanted to do the same thing or at least they wanted it to look like they did the same thing. They wanted it to look like it. And so that's why the Bible says in chapter 5 verse 1, a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira or, or Ananias with his, with his wife Sapphira, sold a possession. Th- look, it's the very next verse after what Barnabas did. They sold a possession. The problem was they kept back part of the proceeds, right? His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So they just basically did what they saw Barnabas do, or at least it looked that way. So yeah, they went and sold a property too. But guess what? They put more effort and energy and, and strategy in, in, in trying to fool everyone by pretending to do what the man of God had actually done. Um... And so it's interesting how they thought they were going to get away with that. So right here, I want to take a moment, I want to pause for a moment, and I want to tell you what I do not believe um, the actual focus is on this story and what the sins are not. You see, Ananias and Sapphira, whatever the sin was in them, cost them their life. It costs them their life. Now before I go any further, I do want to say I am so thankful that people are not dropping dead in the churches because of sin and hidden sin. Oh, I'm so grateful for that because that's scary. And, and, and there are some believers that are probably watching right now saying, no, we need more of that. It'll straighten out the church. And you know what? You're right. It would straighten out the church the way it straightened out the early church almost instantly for a time. But I just want to point out to you, whatever the sin was, cost them their life. It cost them everything. And so, I don't believe that the sin that they had was holding, holding back. When you read Scripture, look at what it says. It says, but a certain man... Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a possession, kept back the part of the proceeds, right? His wife being aware of it, and brought a certain part of it, laid it at the apostles' feet. Verse 3 says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? I want to point out to you that I just, I don't think it's it's specifically about uh, them holding back on God. Okay, and I'm going to show you why. Verse 4 says, while it, re- while it remained, in other words, no one ever required this of you, Ananias. The apostles, the, the, you know, the, the men of God, the leaders of the church, nobody ever set up rules for you to have to do this. So ultimately, you made a decision on your own to go and sell a piece of property. It was your property. And then when you sold it, whatever came in was still in your control. So no one ever required it of you, yet this is what you decided to do. Bible says, 
Verse, verse 4, while it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, uh, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You've not lied to men, but to God. Now, was it important uh, that they, they, they gave some and held back some? You know, again, I just don't think that the story was really zeroing in on people not paying their tithe. I just want to make that clear. Not to say that, that that's a good thing because that's not a good thing. And God's word teaches us, at least, uh, you know, we can all agree this, that God teaches us to be givers, to be generous givers in the body of Christ. So I don't think it was about that. I don't think it was about them holding back. The sin wasn't holding back. I do believe that we need to give our all to God, but I believe it's our whole heart, our whole trust, our obedience to the Lord. I also... I also don't believe that it was some sin of, of not giving their everything the way maybe um, Barnabas did, just did. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but let me just point it out to you. I don't, I don't think it was God saying, I want your every penny. And some people would preach and say, no, I think he does. I, I think it has more to do with, I want your heart. I want your obedience to me. I want your trust. Because in that, God will show us what to do, how to do it, how to live. And then, of course, that affects the part of your life, the, the, mon the money part of it. I just think that the, the sin that cost Ananias and Sapphira their life was the pretending Another word for it is hypocrisy. It's this sin, this thing that, that they were doing. They, they wanted to look like they were obedient to God. They wanted to look like they were doing what all the other believers were doing. They wanted to look like they were pure in heart and had the love for God and love for their neighbor. They wanted it to look that way. And I think that was the thing that was the thing. Now, again, I don't want to say to you that there's never a time where God won't co convict you or correct you over maybe something he told you to do and you didn't do it with when it, as it pertains to money. Uh, I believe that God, God has, convicted, uh, has convicted all of us at time, one time or another. But this story is about this pretending that leads to powerlessness. And so the Bible tells us pretty clearly that it was in their control all along. They didn't have to do it. They didn't have to sell anything. They didn't have to give anything. They didn't have to, to, to repeat what they saw someone else do. They didn't have to. But they did it with the intention of, of look, making it look like they were doing what God wanted them to do. And and by looking at this story from that perspective, you start to get an idea of how God doesn't like that. And again, I want to say to you, I am so thankful that God is not dropping people dead over hypocrisy. Because if that was the case, boy, oh boy, we would have problems across the world in the churches because of the different levels of hypocrisy that some might be trying to to live out and, and trying to get away with. Are we grateful and thankful for the grace of God? Yes. Bible tells us right there in chapter 4 uh, that I think it was, the, the, uh, I think it was um, verse 33, great grace was on them all. So we're thankful for the grace of God. We're thankful for His grace and His mercy. Thank you so much, Lord God. But again, I just have to plug it in there. I'm thankful that God's not dropping people dead. But here we see in the early church, in the earliest of days, when there was a purity of heart and power was demonstrated all over the place. Amazing things happening. I mean, we read a little further, didn't we? We saw how people's, people were getting healed by the shadow uh, uh, of Peter. We saw how, how miracles were happening and multitudes were being added to the church. Powerful, supernatural things taking place. An amazing time. So let's begin to bring this down. Let's begin to bring this down. Because I do believe that the Lord dealt with the, the issue 
quickly within the early part of the church so that we uh, and everyone who had ever come after this you know this time of the church would learn and recognize that God does not hypocrisy uh, and lying to the Holy Spirit and 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 displaying a, a hypocrisy, making people believe, trying to fool people and trying to fool God. This doesn't go over well with the Lord. And, and so we see God deals with it immediately. Immediately to make sure that people understand this is not acceptable. Why would I share this message this morning? Because I felt the Lord speaking to my heart about power. God wants to use his people to walk in power. But what God's not going to do is he's not going to bless our hypocrisy, our pretending. Again, when you start to look at this story, it isn't really about money, is it? It's not really about, I mean, there's, that's the, the thing that happened, the event that took place that demonstrated the problem. But I do not believe Ananias and Sapphira's sin that cost them their life. I don't believe it was about money. It was about hypocrisy. It was about pretending and trying to pretend to God who sees everything and knows everything. I speak these words with humility because I don't, I don't claim to be a person that, you know, a authoritative person who can speak from a place of perfection. I can talk about this because I don't, I, I, I never make mistakes. No, I, I speak humbly knowing that, man, I don't, want, I don't want lightning to hit me. I don't want God to take my last breath out of my lungs and me drop dead. I, I, I want God to use my life. I want God to use his church. I want God to use his church in power. And yes, in the days we live in, we need the power of God demonstrated everywhere we go. But the thing is, there is something that holds back that power and God addresses it in this story. So let's take a look as we bring this to a close. The Bible tells us um, verse, the second part of verse 4, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. Some key words that I'm about to read to you. So great fear came upon all of those who heard these things. Great fear came upon them. Now, for time's sake, as we read the story further, we see that Sapphira came in and agreed to the little plan they had, and so she dropped dead as well. But the Bible tells us, and I want to show it to you again, in verse 11. So verse 5 and verse 11 say a very similar thing. Verse 11 says, So great fear came upon the church and upon all who heard these things. I want to remind you that the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. And so I want to make that clear before people start to take this out of its context. God doesn't uh, give us a spirit of fear, but I tell you right now, according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31, the Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a fearful thing. And when we see in this passage of Scripture, in this account, we see that great fear fell upon the church. This is not God giving us fear, but there is such a thing as godly fear and respect and honor that we must have before our Lord. In other words, don't play games with God. Don't play games with God. The fear of the Lord is a real thing. It's the beginning of wisdom. You would think Ananias and Sapphira, they would have had wisdom if they would have had the fear of the Lord. They just, they just didn't. And so God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. He gives us a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. But understand that the great fear that came upon them shook the church, awakened them, and made them realize that that's not something you ever want to do. 
You don't play with God like that. You don't play games with the Lord. So I want to bring it, bring it back to the main focus, just in case you kind of got sidetracked onto fear and, and onto you know, people dying and all of that, and God's judgment. I want to point out to you that the point of this message, the point of what I think is being said here, it's all about this power. God was using the church. Many people were being saved. Many people were, were being healed and amazing things were taking place. And the enemy always tries to stop God's power moving in the church. Always. And what's his number one tool? The weaknesses of those who are in the church. Those who are in the body. You might think within your own self, my little failures and mistakes don't hurt the church. Oh, yes, it does. We hurt one another because when one hurts, we all hurt. So, yes, it's so important that we look at the life of Ananias and Sapphira, look at the time frame, and look at the, the great fear that fell upon them. What did it do? It, it snapped people back into place pretty quickly. If there was ever anyone that was going to go, oh man, look at Ananias and Sapphira. Hey, they got away with that. And, and, and you know, or maybe they never would have known because it would have been hidden. Uh, people would have, uh, just with the sin nature of mankind, would have started finding other ways to put all their effort and time into making it look like they were obeying the Lord. They would have kept doing it. My, my question is, are people still doing it? I believe so. I do believe so. People are still not seeing. They're not seeing how important it is to, to walk in the power of God and how our pretending hinders that power. I'm going to bring this to a close with this. I say this a lot. I encourage this a lot. I do it on purpose because I know that this is a, something that will help you greatly. God wants to move. He's going to move. And he's going to move through those who he can show his power through. Okay? But I, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people say stuff in the church. A lot of people say things, make statements. You know, they see things happen and they make statements like, well, my God, he doesn't do that. I don't know what God you're believing in, but my God doesn't judge me. Or my God's a loving God. He would never do anything like that. Or, my God is a gracious and merciful God. He's never going to, to discipline people like that. Or he's never going to allow that kind of thing to happen. My God this and my God that. And, my, you, know, and, and you hear people in the body of Christ say those kinds of things. My God this and my God. Well, I want to tell you that those in the body of Christ, here's my encouragement to you. Stay in your word if you read this story alone, just that story, you see clearly that in the early church, God allowed great fear to fall upon the early church. The fear of the Lord. Why? Because it keeps us looking to God with purity, with trust. Keeps us looking to, uh, evaluating whether we're in the faith, whether we're walking the way God wants us to walk. And if you're not sure, and if you see something happening, and right away you want to say, well, my God will never do this. My God this and my God that, I want to remind you, you cannot create for yourself your own version of God. You cannot. It, God is the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, the God of, of the New Testament, as well as the Old Testament. He's the God of all gods. He's the King of all kings. You cannot remake Him. You cannot make a version of Him. You cannot say... I like this about him and I don't like this about him. He's almighty, deserving of our praise, our prayer, our faith, even deserving of our fear and reverence, our respect. 
And so because so many times you hear this stuff and you see people misleading other people with weird ideas, I must say to you that the scripture is clear. It helps us to know our God, to know who he is and how he handles different things in different situations. It shows us his heart. Probably, I can probably say this safely, Probably not adequately because God, the Bible even says, there's not enough books in the world to hold all the things that Jesus did while he was here and said. So, but the Bible's been given to us so that we can know who we serve. I, I just believe the thing that's going to continue to hinder us from walking in, this, in God's power is a lack of purity. And what kind of purity? I'm not talking about anything else right now. I'm just talking about a pure faith. You can be an imperfect person seeking out the Lord, humbling yourself in repentance, bringing your sin to the Lord uh, in obedience and faithfulness, and be pure. Because pure faith, pure trust... It's just that, Lord, I trust you. Even when I don't always understand, I'm seeking you so that I may understand, but I trust you. And when somebody says one thing or another, I'm going to go to the word. I'm going to go to the word. I'm going to look, and I'm going to see if that's true. What if somebody said to you, well, my God doesn't judge me like that, and and, and so, you know, my God is just, he's he's a good God. Well, of course he's good. But how many know that sometimes the fear of the Lord awakens us up to this simple fact that we've got to live God's way, not ours. Our way. Here's, I gotta close the Bible up because I just want to keep going. There's so much in this story and I just can't even touch it today. There's so much. But imagine, imagine if God just decided I'm not going to let any time go by. I'm just going to judge the hypocrisy now. I'm just going to judge the pretending now. What if God just decided to do that and people just started dropping dead like Ananias and Sapphira? What would happen? You see, what I'm saying to you is if there's anything that holds back power, which we, we need his power so desperately in our lives, to overcome, to be effective, to reach the lost, to do what what only he can do. The thing that holds back that power in our lives, because God wants to put that power in us, is the pretending. So you uh, you gotta ask yourself this question. In the days we live in, in 2020, evaluate your life. Are you pretending to be a person who genuinely and humbly seek the Lord? Are you pretending to genuinely hunger for his word? And the pretending is is kind of making people believe, but you're not fooling God. Evaluate your life. I, I love using this as a measuring tool, our time. The Bible tells us to redeem the time for the days are evil. It's funny, me and and I said I'll close about five times, so this will be the real one. Sorry, guys. Um, Me and my wife were just talking about this the other day, about how, well, I mentioned it, and we just kind of thought about it, how you can actually measure how much time you spend in front of your phone or your computer. You can measure that. You can social media and all that. You can actually look at how long, how long did you spend on Instagram today? Facebook, YouTube. And don't say, while well, listening to your messages, I've been all, all day. <laughs> Sorry. But seriously, you just wanted to check one thing and next thing you know, turn it a couple hours worth of bouncing back and forth. You only got 24 hours in a day. That's all you get. 
And if you're spending six, eight hours, five hours in that unholy device, <laughs> I'm careful there because there's ways to use it as well. But you're spending that kind of time and then there's a certain amount of sleep and eating and working. Where's that time to be seeking the Lord? I'm pretty sure it's getting eaten up. Yet, we want people to believe, I am a man of God, I'm a woman of God, I love the Lord, and I'm, I'm all about, I'm this and I'm that. Be careful with the I'ms. Be careful with that. God, forgive us when we hinder your power by pretending to be what we are not. And I'm not advocating go out there and hang your dirty laundry out for the whole world to see. No, bring it to the throne of God. Bring it to the altar of the Lord humbly, repentively, and you'll find that that's, there's a purity in that. you got to work through repentance, humility. He'll work through that. I gotta stop. Mm. All right, because I was about to go into part three. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I know that, God, there's so many who would hear such a message like this and not, not really take it in the way they used to be able to take it in, Father. Oh, Lord, I pray, my God, first and foremost, that you would help us to return to a place of humility, that we would spend the time that we're supposed to spend. Lord, use our time to truly uh, look to you for that purity. Father, look to you for that relationship. And, and Lord, to look to you for your heart and the wisdom of God in the word. Lord, help us, Father, we pray. We humble ourselves before you and repent of that. Lord God, it's such a temptation, Father. It's such a temptation to be so sucked in and wrapped into, into constantly just being taken into... Um, using our time so in such a wrong way, Lord God, that there just doesn't seem to be any time for you. Oh God, then, then what do we do with it, Lord? Then we get out in public and we hold face. We make people believe that we're still all right. Father, forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us, Lord. We don't want to hinder your power. We want to see your power in our midst. Thank you for this incredible account. Thank you for the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the purity of faith that they demonstrated. Thank you, Lord God, for cutting us to our heart. Thank you, Lord, so we would, we would come back to that great place that that fear of the Lord in our life, especially in the days we live in, Lord. So many things testing us, challenging us, Lord, and we're, we find ourselves just full of opinions about what's right and wrong. Oh, gracious God, help us to be a people who seek your word to find out what's right and wrong, not the wickedness that's being spread throughout our world. Help us, Lord. For your glory and your honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, I know that uh, you guys were troopers today and you hung in with me for a long time, but I do believe that, uh, that God is like pulling from our heart, fixing things, just really doing that. And so... Let God's word get a hold of you. Let, his, let his, his message get a hold of you. Amen. So we're going to close this morning's service by saying thank you so much for being faithful, uh, attending, uh, sharing the message. We know that, that people will come and, and watch the video and listen to these messages if you're helping out. And so thank you for all that you do. Uh, at this time, as we get ready to close, we're going we're gonna to have our time of giving. And again, even after looking at that story, you know, don't, don't ever think, oh, man, I didn't give enough, and so God's going to kill me. <laughs> That's not what that story's about, ever. But we do want to know 
uh, or want you to know rather that giving is a part of what God teaches us to do. So that's why we do it every service. Uh, why do we give every service? Well, we give an opportunity every service for someone to be able to worship God with their giving. And then we turn around and use the finances to continue to preach the gospel in the different ways that we can. So um, just remember, for those of you who are at home, uh, you can text to give. Uh, and a lot of you have been giving faithfully. Uh, there is a need, so just continue. If God puts something on your heart, don't do it for people to see it. Don't do it so that somebody can know about it. Do it because it's just something God put in your heart to do. And I just believe that God meets the needs of the church that way when people, when God's people obey him. So let's do that. Pretty sure on the screen you've seen the way we can text to give. So amen with that. I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to pray over this offering too. Uh, that God would move mightily in your, in your life and in your finances. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in the kingdom and do the kingdom's work. We pray this day that abundance would happen, abundant blessing would happen upon the people of God. And Father, that we, your people, would always be a people who want to do what you want us to do with everything we have. Lord, help us to be a, a good example in a really broken world. Help us to show what the power of God really looks like and the miracles of the Lord. Use us, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. And we got to close with that. God bless you. Love you. I hope that you understand that this message comes from a heart of love. Uh, we want to see God moving in your life and through your life. And so we got to preach every part as best we can. God bless you. Hope to see you back. Keep your uh, eye on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. Share the message. Like, subscribe. Do all those things. Help us to continue to reach as many as we can. And uh, don't forget, next Sunday, the 22nd, right? I believe I got my dates right. We will be back together in every way. God bless you. We're dismissed. See you soon.